Hi everybody, hey, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas with Cascade the Wonder Dog. He says, hello everybody. He's the star of the show anymore. Hey, we're out in the garage at the Eco Ranch ready to start part two of the um, rocket stove incinerator hot water heater cooktop build. Um, part one, and someone, uh, someone was pretty sharp and did notice that that tubing that I'm using is galvanized tubing. Again, if you study about galvanized tubing, it can put off toxic fumes, zinc. Zinc can be toxic, especially if you are breathing the fumes. So I've got precautions. One of them, of course, is the garage doesn't have, uh, it, it only has one wall in it. The other precaution is I'm going to have my little uh, fan on, uh, and I will wear the respirator. Now, I'm only going to be doing um, probably a third of the welding is with that galvanized tube. The rest of it's going to be um, <clears throat> on the uh, steel casing of the of the hot water heater. So we're about to get started. I have to get the dog hair off of me. I'm waiting for the power to come up a little bit. Uh, I have this set up. I have all my tools here, my little um, inverter welder. And I thought I'd show you. This is where the grate is going to go. And this is actually down here. So the grate will go... The grate will weld where I showed you. The feed tube will come in here. The feed tube again is galvanized. So the first weld is going to be to get this grate in. So we'll get to that in just a few minutes, just as soon as I've got enough power around here. Okay, so I've moved back out into the garage. I've got my respirator, got my fan just a little bit off screen blowing to kind of blow the air away from me. I think I'm gonna to have to move it because the wind is blowing this direction. So I'll put the fan on the other side. All my, uh, all my gear for the welding, uh, and I'm going to sit down here and do the welding. But I, I just, I had a thought after I did that last segment. You know, when I did part one of this, uh, and I don't know if I actually said this was galvanized pipe or not in that segment, but someone came and made the comment about, I would lose that galvanized pipe, no one wants zinc poisoning. I didn't take it to be a troll, I took it to be somebody that was trying to be helpful. But the whole point, always in everything that I do and everything I try to teach and everything I sit here and talk too much according to some trolls everything I do is about the three R's of sustainable living reuse recycle repurpose the three R's yes lose the pipe go buy another one when I buy another one it creates a demand for another one for the ore to be taken out of the ground and, 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 and resources depleted. When here's a pipe, and all I gotta do is turn a fan on. Think about that. The three R's, reuse, recycle, repurpose. Yes, if you got a pocket full of money or you've got a credit card, God forbid if you have a credit card, then you're in the life debt and you're making a big mistake, go to DaveRamsey.com and learn how to not have the credit card. But, it's easy to buy new stuff but you don't realize the down the road impact. Just driving the stuff to the uh, to the big box store to buy it. Making the stuff. When you can find something and reuse it, you're far better off. And there was another point in there. This gentleman was making a nice point. So by no means am I calling him a troll. But the trolls do come out and they look at little things like that, an imperfection, something I haven't done wrong. And goodness knows with this, there is going to be a lot of imperfections. Someone that's a skilled metal worker is going to do a far better job than me. I already showed you the coils. I've seen people do far better coiling, but, you know, the whole purpose is for me to not show you how a journeyman does things. The whole way, the whole purpose, rather, is for me to show you how you can do things. I'm as imperfect as you are. Maybe I have a little more experience in thinking outside of the box. But, that's all. So if I can do it, you can do it. If I have imperfections, I have imperfections. Don't troll me about it, I know. I'm one of the smartest people you'll ever meet. I know when I've screwed up. I know when I've done something wrong. I don't need you to remind me. It's not getting posted anyway on the comments. So, the point I have, and I'm not picking on this fellow because I know exactly what his intent was and he was just saying, you know, there, there is a danger from uh, zinc poisoning with galvanized pipe. But if your entire takeaway, and I've said this before, if your entire takeaway from a whole 20 minute video that I've done is, oh, you didn't wear your safety glasses, or oh, you put your hand over the barrel of your gun, or oh, you missed a spot. If that's your takeaway, 
don't come back. Don't watch my videos. Yes, I'm going to make mistakes. First of all, I'm 65. Second of all, I'm human. Thirdly, I get tired, just like you do. If I get tired, yes, I'm going to look a little careless. I might even be careless. That cost me my thumbnail being careless. It just, those things happen. If your entire takeaway is something that you think that I haven't done right, or I should throw this away and get something that's safer, don't come back. It's not worth it to you. I'm trying to show you how to repurpose, reuse, recycle, and live sustainably on a planet that's supposed to only handle 2 billion people that's very soon going to have 10 billion people. This is going to make the difference between your grandchildren eating or not eating in a very short time. So, now that I've got that rant out of the way, so I'm about finished with all the grinding so that I can begin the welding on this, but I ran into a, uh, <clears throat> a change or a potential problem, but not really a problem as much as just a change in what I wanted to do. This is the top piece and this is the bottom piece. <clears throat> they were supposed to be welded together and I was thinking, well, just put one on top of the other and weld it. Well, as I started moving these things around, and, oh, this is a little heavy. And I think you can see the bottom here, which is used to be the bottom of the hot water heater, has got a slight bevel to it, and it goes in about, oh, about an eighth of an inch. Now, if I try to put this <clears throat> on top, like this, you find out that one or both are not exactly round. They're slightly out of round. So I start beating on it with a hammer, and that wasn't working too good. So what I think I'm going to do here, instead of just setting it on and balancing it and then tacking it and welding it all the way around, I'd like it to be a little more solid. So I'm going to go around, put this back down again. Now the lip or the bevel is about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go around here with my grinder and just drop down a quarter of an inch all the way around here just enough that I can bend these little pieces out. Bend them out a bit and um, then drop that in, weld it into place, tack it and weld it into place. That should be a little more sturdy, I think. It'll make a little better seal. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done right now. First thing, uh, this is I rather, this is already ground off, so all I have to do is just um, grind it down. So let me get back suited up with my respirator and my uh, mask and get going. Let me show you what we got to do here. Now on this, I've already got this hooked up to go. This is the bottom grill. I've got it upside down. So this is the bottom grill. This is where all the burning, burning materials are going to end up going down into this, like so. So they'll go through the feed pipe here. which pretty much goes like so. Gives me enough of an angle for the rocket stove to work properly. Plenty of room in the burn chamber. On, the, uh, on this pipe, I have some hinges. Yes, they're galvanized. I'm going to weld one hinge here so that I have a door to just kind of cut off the oxygen if for some reason I need to shut this off. I'll have a little door with the knob on it. Now I didn't bring the other half over here, but the other half, let's pretend that this is now the exhaust on the other half. So the exhaust will go in, get welded into place, goes through the wall, through the bottle wall, and out into the new chimney. When it goes out in the new chimney, what I've done is I've just got the exhaust coming right out here where it'll just come up and out and go up the new chimney. Uh, I think that covers all the welds. Oh, and of course, welding the two pieces together, which I believe you can see I cut the notches in and pried it apart. I've dry fit everything. Everything works great. The second hinge right here. And the second hinge again. I feel real bad that I cut this kind of wonky. The second hinge welds to here and will open my ash door. This whole thing is going to sit on um, fire brick, but that'll be in part three. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So now I'm going to do the assembly and we'll cut back as I get the pieces done, kind of give you a, a, an update as I'm piecing this together. I think it'll be kind of fun. Again, please, don't troll me. I was, in the eighth grade, we had to take uh, shop class. 
and I took shop class, and I'm still just as good today as I was in the eighth grade, So, and I know that. But it's going to work. I guarantee it will work, and that's the whole point. I'm going to show you how you can do it, and if you've got better skills than me, you can troll me, but I'd much rather you make one yourself and show me, and I'll put a link to your better made one. I'll do that to any of you trolls. You show me that you've done a better job, I'll put your link right there in the comments. Anyway, let me get to welding. Well, folks, all I can say is my title as the world's worst welder is not in jeopardy. I'm still the world's worst welder, and I spent the entire day yesterday welding the rocket stove. Now, first of all, we're not done. I still have to put the Kamal on top, but that's the look you're going for. <clears throat> To me, it's beautiful, but if you're any kind of a welder, don't look at the welds, please. Okay, you look at all the things I can do, you're bound to th find three or four that I can't do. One of them, I can't ice skate worth a darn. The other one, drywall, pff, completely escapes me. And welding, eh, forgot about that one, but I am a terrible welder. But I made a mistake, uh, a fairly... A fairly serious mistake that doesn't require any repairs, but like I've told in, in previous videos, I want to tell you and show you mistakes because, hey, we're human. And if we're doing a YouTube video, yeah, it's fun to cut out all the bad stuff where we burp or fart in the video, but we're human. And sometimes humans do things. I made an error. I didn't think this through properly. So let me show you where I made the error. And it was real simple. Remember earlier I mentioned vermiculite. Well, now that I've got this here to show you, and you'll see in the installation, which will be in part three, it's going to sit in, a, um, in an area about 50 inches wide. That's why the tube extends way out here. My feed tube's out here. So it's 50 inches wide this way, about 20... I forget, about 20 inches deep here, but, uh, and then the wall. So, that area I'm going to build up with pretty brick, because it is going to be in my kitchen. It's going to be built up with pretty brick, and the inside filled with vermiculite, is what I said. <clears throat> now, vermiculite is running me, to buy it here, is running me like $60 for, um, I don't know whether it's 12 quarts. Anyway, too much money. So I decided in thinking that, well, I'll just go ahead and use screened dirt. The screened dirt will absorb the excess heat and just kind of radiate it out. In other words, make a thermal mass around this, which would be perfect if it were in the building. It's in, it's, the wall of the kitchen is going to be right here. So this will be out in the patio. The kitchen will be in here. So we're not going to use the heat, but it will contain this. Well, the bottom line is... I don't need a completely sealed weld anyway, so I'm sitting here welding. I used all but four of my sticks. And of course I gotta go, you know, 60 miles to get more sticks. I said, oh shoot! I could I could just you know fill this in with screened dirt and I'm done. What I have to do is take a piece of heavy-duty aluminum foil around the seam here, some baling wire, of which we have plenty of baling wire from the horses. Just take the baling wire and secure the bottom of the aluminum foil. Bailing wire secure the top of the aluminum foil after you know as I put it in place and then fill in with my screened dirt It's done. Nothing's getting in so all right. That was a screw-up. I wasted no less because I'm so terrible than 20 sticks of um, uh, of welding bleh, bleh, 20 welding rods on this where I could have only tacked it in, in two or three places and been done with it So that's a mistake. Don't you make the same mistake? Uh what, what, what is it, what is it um, that's saying? Oh, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So I'm not getting different results. I, I, I've been welding for most of my life, and that's the best I can do. Anyhow, let's move on from that. What I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to invert this on top of the... Um, on top of the Kamal, I do have to weld the Kamal top to this, which is going to take, if this took 20 sticks, I don't know how many it's going to take for me to weld the Kamal top on, so I'm going to need more sticks. But I'll get the Kamal top welded, uh, and then I'm going to move it, and we'll start building it uh, from there. But anyway, here's kind of your look. I'll go over what each thing does um, as I go on, but right now, I'm going to get the Kamal and start, uh, start welding. Well, folks... I have to say, this is probably one of the ugliest things I have ever built. I am still the world's worst welder, but it works. The welds are solid. 
it uh, it will have a tiny bit of leakage right around here simply because I've decided on the installation to um, uh, pour adobe mud around this and I'll get into that come the next one which will be part three the actual installation <clears throat> but the rocket stove itself is done um, and again just to save all you trolls any effort, I know I am the world's worst welder. Don't remind me. I know. I know. I can see. So, I want to get up close and show you, but I do want to say one thing. Guys, if you are a professional welder and you've done welding, I mean, I've been around welders from the days, God, even before I went up and worked on the uh, supply lines for the Alaska Pipeline. You have got my respect, not only for the quality of work you do, but to be able to stand there and have... Uh, have it in your eyes and lungs all those years ago before we had the protection and even now because my eyes are stinging today uh, Lungs not so bad because of the fan blowing, but my eyes are just stinging and I did have a real good um, Welding uh, helmet on so you guys have my respect and uh, let me give you guys a little bit of a close-up of this Just so you can get a look at it. I'm going to post this on Facebook this one a uh, link to it because um I'm going to do a test burn, and on the test burn, I'm going to stuff some creosote push in here, and I want to see what comes out the exhaust, because as with the big rocket stove, I think we're all going to be surprised. So let me give you a close-up. All right, so right here you can see the um, uh, that is the output for the hot water, and that is the cold water input. So it's going to go around 40 feet of uh, coils, come out the top, and that's going to take some tweaking on my installation. Over here is the exhaust port, and uh, that's very, you know, fairly straightforward. The exhaust is just going to come out here and go right up my chimney. This is the intake tube. I hinge, put a hinge on here so that I can smother it if I want to, or at least cut the uh, oxygen flow down. Down here is the um, ash drawer that uh, you'll open and, and clean the ash out. It's going to let some oxygen in also. And then, of course, up here is the cooktop. Uh, we're, on, we're actually going to test the cooktop when I do the test fire, but for right now, got to recharge this battery and get it. Well, right on cue, the wind has come up, but we're going to go ahead with the test burn anyway because this is completely contained. Now, I wanted to show you what I've got here. I've got, um, I've got some paper to start it, which is just used Kleenex and toilet paper, because remember, we don't flush toilet paper down into our septic tank here. Got an old Cheez-Its box. Boring that I cut up. That's going to help get it started. And I spent five minutes out in the desert picking up scraps of uh, creosote bush, just dried up scraps. Who knows, they could be anywhere from, you know, a year to a hundred years old. And I've got some fresh creosote bush back here. And what I'm going to do is light it up, get it up to temperature, show you it burning, stuff some creosote bush in. That's for my friends around here that are plagued by this stuff. And, you know, you don't want to get out and dig it up uh, just for cosmetic purposes because there's better things to do most of the time if only just to sit and drink a beer. Uh, you'll live with it, but if I give you a reason for burning it, then you got a reason to dig it up, and hopefully I'll show us a reason here. So let me get this thing fired up, and uh, I'll come back, and we're also going to just, you saw the little bit of fuel here, we're going to cook an egg on here for, for uh, Debbie to eat and probably an egg sandwich for me. All right. It's up to temperature. I toasted some bread on it. Now, ooh boy, look at that sizzle. Of course, it's not level, but um, there's some butter. Debbie's fried egg. Robert's scrambled egg. What do you think, guys? Perfect cooktop. Except the butter's running away on me. There we go. Perfect little cooktop. Yeah, I got a bit of smoke coming out here. That I know how to uh, cure. We're not getting a draw because I don't have the, um, uh, I, I don't have the, I'll spit it out. I don't have the chimney built, so we don't get a draw. We will get a draw. That will stop. It, it's the same thing I ran into in the, in, in the other one with my first test burn. But there you go. Cooktop. Incinerator. I'm going to cook this up and then throw the creosote in. 
So guys, Debbie and I got nice egg sandwiches and about the same time we would have got from, from the grill the way it was. Again, the smoke is coming out here simply because I don't have a proper draw for the fireplace. Uh, for the chimney. I keep saying fireplace and I mean chimney. Anyhow, here's a, here's a bundle of creosote bush. Now I want you to watch the lack of white smoke that comes out here because we've got that high temperature up here that's reburning that horrible white smoke we used, usually get. Take it. There comes the white smoke on this end. Put it in there. Let's see what we got. Nothing. It's reburning it. Yeah, there's some smoke coming out here. I, I know, and I can't say it enough. I don't have a proper draw right now. But ordinarily, throwing that much in, we would have had a puff, a big, huge puff of white smoke. Now let's see, because I know if you're living in this area or even in uh, parts of uh, New Mexico and Arizona where there's a lot of creosote bush due to the overgrazing of cattle in the 19th century, that uh, you're going to be interested. So, stuff it in. There we go. What do we got? Hey, there's your use for creosote bush right there. Now there's a reason to get out and clear your property. And let's call that a successful test burn. You can see my sandwich sitting there. So with that, I'll end this. Part three will be the actual installation over here. Uh, and I'll explain that as we go. So, until next time, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in beautiful far west Texas. We could use some extra work exchange people. Saying to all of you, see you later. I'm hungry.